Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about an IMO branded PV array DC isolator. This particular PV disconnect switch will allow for you to disconnect two PV strings with this one switch. So we're going to be talking about how to wire that up. In our last video, we talked about how to install your own MC4 connectors. Uh, so we will be using these to be able to set up our own array uh, easily to our PV um, disconnect uh, when we're ready to charge our system with solar and we'll set up these other wires to go to our solar charge controller. With this particular switch, it tells you it's a type 4X that allows you to put uh, two strings of arrays inside of this one switch, which allows you to turn off two different arrays coming into this switch. It tells you it is an IP66 rating, which uh, allows you to have some waterproof uh, rating inside of this enclosure. This is your switch to turn it, uh, allow you to turn it on. So it this way, that turns your array on and it allows you to turn off, which keeps your system safe if you need to work on it or in case of emergency situations. If you turn it a little further, it does allow you to put a lock through this for a lockout tag out situation in case you are working on your system to keep everyone safe. Let's get inside this. We have two screws that keep your enclosure together. We'll undo those screws. It's a Phillips head, number two. Right now your switch is off. So this is what is turning your switch here. Notice on the inside you do have a couple of screws later on that will allow you to attach your switch to the back of the enclosure. We'll set these two aside for now. On one side we have the stickers and the ratings of this switch for the UK. On the other side we have the US ratings which is where we're going to focus now. It has a chart with the voltage ratings. If we're using a, the two poles, the two poles in parallel or the four poles, we're going to be using the two poles today. It has 350 volt rating, the 500 volt, 600 volt, and it shows you the amp ratings if you're using Anything in parallel, the amp ratings go up. And then for the four pole ratings, this is about a 32 amp rated disconnect. We're using 100 watt panels. We're using three in series. They're about a little under six amps each. And using them in series, we're well under the 32 amps that we need. Each of the 100 watt panels are about 26 volts. So we're about 75 volts. We're still well under the rating for this switch. So this switch will be fine for what we need. Let's look closer at the pamphlet that comes within the box um, because this is really important to understand. There's a couple of things that we're looking at. You've got some, some wire diagrams here and notice these show you your circuits, but these are just line drawings. It says one is connected to two and three to four for your two pole diagram. For your parallel series, it's a little bit different. That's if you're using some jumpers and for your four, four pole, one to two, three to four, five is connected to six, and seven is connected to eight, and then you've got some different things with jumpers. But however, if you look at your switching examples, they're a little bit different. You've got some, some pictures here, and you notice you've got one, three, and then down here you have two, four. Those don't look like your line diagrams. So you've got to pay close attention to this. Notice one is opposite two, and then three is opposite four. You've got positive, to positive and you've got negative to negative. That's going to be really important as we begin to actually put in our wires. So because we're using two pole, this is the one that we're going to be following here. If you were going to be using four pole, this is the one you would be following and we'll look at that closer um, as we look at the switch itself. You've got the size cables that you were going to use, you've got the tools that you're going to be using, and then on the back you have some different mounting options. You have some things about your enclosure and the environmental ratings. This is the most important thing for us today, right here, our wiring diagrams and how to wire it up with your switching examples. So as we look at the switch, this looks like the pictures in the diagram where we see 
the numbers are opposite. 1, 2, 3 to 4, 5 to 6, 7 to 8. So the numbers are opposite where we see 1, 3, 5, 7 on top. And on the bottom, we see 8, 6, 4, and 2. So remember how we said 1 and 2 were connected based on the line diagram. Notice how these are all staircased. So these are all stacked. In order for 1 and 2 to be connected, 1 is on the lower level, and over here, 2 is on the lower level. So on the lower level, they're connected even though they're on opposite sides. 3 is on the second level. 4 over here is on the second level. 5 is on the third level. 6 is on the third level. 7 is on the top level. And 8 is on the top level. So they're connected by level as they're stacked up. Now, if that gets confusing, we can test that with continuity. So continuity is where you can trace a path of completed electrical conductivity. And so we'll, we'll test that with our multimeter and we'll show you what that means. If there's any question about your switch or what is connected, you can always check the continuity. You may wonder if you have jumpers already installed, you can always check that with continuity as well. So what we'll do is we'll take our multimeter and your symbol that looks like sound waves is actually your continuity tester and it's usually combined with your ohm meter symbol as well. So what we'll do is we'll turn our multimeter to the sound meter sound symbol and when you have a completed circuit you can hear an audible sound. Right now you see the OL that means open loop it is not making a closed circuit so we don't hear a sound when we do we can hear an audible sound. When there's a closed loop, you can see a number pop up on the screen. Right? So remember, we made sure that the knob was in the off position, so we shouldn't have a closed circuit anywhere in here. We'll go ahead and test that. Because there, there is, it's off, there should be no sound coming out. We should not have a closed circuit. We'll test one and two. There's nothing. We'll test three and four. Nothing five and six. So we're not really proving anything here other than things should be off, which means our switch should work correctly. So we can also test seven with six, seven with four, seven with two, and five with everything, just to make sure that nothing is connected with anything else, especially while it's in the off position. Now we're going to one with all the other. We don't hear a sound with any of these. All right, let's, uh, Put this in and go ahead and turn it to the on position. Now we've got it on, so if our switch is working correctly, then we should be able to tell what is connected and what is not connected. So we said one and two should be connected. We should hear an audible sound and we may or may not be able to see a number pop up on our screen. So I'm in one. Okay, so we have continuity between one and two. Let's make sure we don't have continuity between one and four, nothing, one and six, one and eight. So only one and two are connected. We'll go to three. Three is not connected with two, but it is connected with four. Not connected with six, and not connected with eight. We'll go to five, five is should be connected with six, it is, it's not connected with eight, not connected with four, and not connected with two. Again, we'll check seven, seven should be connected with eight, there it is, not connected with six, not connected with four, and not connected with two. So that's just one way you can test and make sure which ones are connected, and we have figured out that one and two are connected, and three and four are connected, and these are the ones that we're gonna be using to connect up our positive and negative wires. This will be seated inside of our enclosure. We've got some knockouts here on the side, or on the top and bottom, and our wires will go up through here and connect inside our terminals. And so we'll take a, a drill, we'll, we'll take our cable glands, 
which will help to keep this somewhat, uh, keep our IP66 rating. We'll insert those through. This will tighten down on our cables and uh, we'll be able to keep this secure. Um, so what we'll do right now is we'll take our knockouts. Because we're going to be using one and two, we're going to use the top left knockout and three and four, we'll use the bottom right knockout. So the wires that will connect to our PV array will take in through the top. My positive, I'm going to put in one. My negative is going to go into three. And we'll tighten the screws down. And then we could tighten our cable glands. And we'll take our wires that will eventually go to our charge controller. And remember, one is connected to two. So I'll need to make sure that one goes to two. And three is connected to four, so my negative goes to four. and tighten the terminals down. And then double check that you have your positive going from one and two, and your negative going from three to four. You can take your smaller screws and connect your switch to the back of your enclosure. Reconnect your screws. Connect your system to your charge controller and you're ready to connect your panels. When you get ready to select your disconnect switch, please make sure it is DC rated. Direct current is coming from your solar panels and unlike AC or alternating current, direct current is constant. You have to have a DC rated disconnect switch so that you can guard against fires. All right, so now hopefully you're ready to connect your solar panels, as am I. And if there's ever any question, you know how to check your continuity and you can do so with confidence. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more solar installations, tips, tricks, and solar insights. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar, where we believe solar is for everyone. Thanks for watching. See you next time.